Reunions in the Middle East continue. I squeezed, I probably squeezed too hard. And how Israel is helping those released by Hamas. Much to do in the House this week. We will not be facing a government shutdown. After lawmakers return to Capitol Hill. And a woman goes solo, close to making history. You just need to keep pushing on and keep going. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak. Hello, South Florida. I'm Kelly Sanchez. I'm Kenneth Bueno. Today is Wednesday, November 29th, 2023. Live from the Lee Kaplan School of Journalism and Media in North Miami, this is Kaplan News. A tough road ahead as dozens of released hostages begin the process of rehabilitation. While a sixth set of hostages is scheduled to be freed by Hamas today, dozens of hostages continue to reunite with their loved ones and rehabilitate. As CNN's John Lawrence reports, there is still an uphill climb between Israel and Hamas almost two months into the war. Tears, hugs and smiles from family and friends for the dozens of hostages released by Hamas over the past few days. That includes nine-year-old Emily Hand, who was held captive for seven weeks. It was um, beautiful, just like I imagined it, you know, running together. Um, I squeezed, I probably squeezed too hard. During the halt in military action between Israel and Hamas, some much needed supplies are being brought into Gaza. Additional flights are expected in the coming days, and this aid is in addition to the more than 500,000 pounds of food assistance delivered by the United States last week. But this relative calm in the Gaza region may not last much longer. We are committed to completing our missions, freeing all of the hostages, eliminating this terrorist organization above and below ground, and of course, to ensure that Gaza not return to being what it was. Democratic Senator Peter Welch of Vermont says the ceasefire expiring would be a, quote, grave mistake. But few of his colleagues from either party agree. Israel's going to follow the rules of war, the law of war. Uh, we need to stand solidly behind them, and the administration needs to keep uh, putting their foot on the accelerator and getting the American hostages and all the hostages that remain out. I'm John Lawrence reporting. Former First Lady Rosalind Carter is being laid to rest today in Georgia following a private family service. She was recognized as a political strategist, diplomat, and advocate. Best known for her role as First Lady, she left a lasting impact on the office. Yesterday, family, leaders, and luminaries united to remember her life. In her 96 years of life, she built a legacy for herself that won't be forgotten. The House of Representatives returned to Washington yesterday with a big to-do list. As CNN's Julia Benbrook reports, Republicans continue to face challenges as they lead with a very slim majority. Members of the House of Representatives are back on Capitol Hill with important agenda items to address. Aid to Israel, the annual defense policy bill, and multiple government funding bills. We're optimistic that we'll be able to get those negotiated and done in time so that we will not be facing a government shutdown. But House Republicans face unique challenges as they lead with a very slim majority. When you only have three or four votes to spare and a lot of people want a lot of different things, there's just simply no compromise to be had to keep the funding open with just Republican votes. And the small majority could get even smaller. Congressman George Santos, a Republican from New York, is facing possible expulsion. What that does do is complicate the math for Republicans, right, and especially Speaker Johnson, where you remove a, a reliably conservative vote for all of these things that we've talked about that Republicans want to pass, and you create a vacancy when you can't afford to have any votes missing. A bipartisan House Ethics Committee released a scathing report earlier this month, finding evidence that he broke federal laws, stole from his campaign, and delivered a, quote, constant series of lies to get elected. Santos denounced the investigation, calling the report biased. But after its release, he announced he won't run again in 2024. Whether Congress votes to expel Santos or he remains in Congress for now, his swing district seat will be up for grabs at some point, and both Republicans and Democrats will be looking to claim it. In Washington, Julia Benbrook. A mysterious respiratory illness in dogs has now been reported in at least a dozen states. Florida is one of the 14 states where it has been found, and researchers are struggling to understand what is happening. Scientists in New Hampshire haven't been able to identify any virus, bacteria, or fungus responsible. 
Researchers in Colorado believe it starts with a virus that develops into secondary bacterial pneumonia. The disease appears to appears to be similar to kennel cough and seems to spread more easily in high volume areas like boarding and doggy daycare facilities and dog parks. The world's biggest cruise ship is heading to South Florida. Royal Caribbean is taking ownership of the brand new icon of the seas. The handover for the 20 deck 250,000 ton ship took place in Finland one week ago. Icon of the seas has the capacity to hold nearly 10,000 passengers and crew. Its delivery was delayed due to the pandemic. After southern Spain, it was set to sail in Miami in late January to tour the Caribbean. Federal authorities have launched an investigation after a hacking attack on a water authority near Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. It's the latest in a series of cyber attacks in various cities in the U.S. that target critical systems like public utilities and healthcare. CNN's Laura Aguirre has more on the recent attacks and who authorities believe may be behind them. I'm surprised, but I'm not shocked. I mean, we've seen attacks from nation state adversaries on a lot of our infrastructure. Pennsylvania Representative Chris Deluzio reacting to one of the nation's latest critical system cyber attacks on an out of the way municipal water authority in his state, in the city of Aliquippa, about 35 minutes northwest of Pittsburgh. Local officials say an automated control system manufactured by the Israeli based company Unitronics shut down Friday. When it was rebooted, a message appeared on a monitor screen saying, Our system had been hacked by legal right from the Cyber Avengers down with Israel. The Department of Homeland Security is now investigating the attack by the self-proclaimed Cyber Avengers. Federal officials say it's a pro-Iran anti-Israeli group that has claimed several similar attacks on X, formerly Twitter. Aliquippa authorities confirmed that no customers lost water service as workers were able to operate the affected system manually. But it's one of several U.S. infrastructure alarm bells in recent days. Since Thanksgiving Day, several hospitals in East Texas and New Jersey have been forced to scale back patient care after separate suspected ransomware attacks crippled critical technology systems. Authorities in both states are working with federal investigators to find out what happened and resume full operations. We've got to make sure we're giving local governments and state governments the means to protect themselves against bad actors who are sophisticated, countries like Iran, China, North Korea. I'm Laura Aguirre reporting. The Heat faces a familiar foe as they try to make it into the knockout round of the in-season tournament. That's still ahead, and so is the story. You just need to keep pushing on and keep going and know that you can make it through. The end of a coast-to-coast -coast run is bringing one woman across the desert and into the history books. Newsbreak will be back in two minutes. How prepared is your family if a tornado shows up at your doorstep, or a flood, or a hurricane? You can't just turn away a natural disaster. That's why it's important to go to ready.gov plan now. It has the tools and tips you need to make an emergency plan with your family. So if disaster comes knocking, let's go. You'll be ready to help keep your family safe. It's just a pizza. Yes. Make a plan today. Jordan knows he shouldn't eat this entire bowl of nachos, but tonight he's earned that right. Because a few hours ago in the middle of happy hour, he recognized a sign. Not from the gods or a bolt of lightning, but from a double heart, a kissy face, and a fourth ha in ha ha ha. That's when Jordan knew he was buzzed. So when it was time to go, he got a ride home instead of driving. Be a legend like Jordan. Recognize your buzzed warning signs and get a ride home. Buzz driving is drunk driving. I help our fellows design their paths as creative entrepreneurs. My experiences serving startups, creative businesses, and cultural organizations, and my journey as a queer mixed immigrant with Haitian and Arabic roots inform the co-creative environment we foster at Radcliffe. 
We leverage our collective diversity to encourage the building of lifelong personal learning networks and mindsets that stimulate continuous innovation. Across America, a hiker is wrapping up with the hardest part of her journey. She's trying to become the first woman ever to complete a challenging cross-country journey all by herself. Reporter Audrey Mayer from KRNB ha and in Reno has details. 6,200 miles, almost two years with two more states to go. Brianna DeSanctis started her cross-country journey in Cape Henlopen, Delaware, and expects to become the first solo woman to finish the American Discovery Trail in San Francisco in a few weeks. But she has to get through rural Nevada first. So I have to go back to Eureka, Nevada tomorrow morning and start working my way back here. Brianna says this next trek will be the most physically demanding part of her journey. The next 300 miles are so remote, Brianna's family buried food and water for her every 80 miles along the trail. And they drove out and buried a five gallon bucket full of food and water for me and gave me the coordinates and told me how to find it and I just have to get there and I hope it's still there. <laughs> to keep warm, she has her tent, winter sleeping bag and just tries to keep moving constantly during the day. But believe it or not, she says that's not the most difficult part of her solo adventure. The hardest part are the mental challenges and what you face and just keeping your drive to keep going and keep pushing when the weather gets bad, when you get bored, when there are stretches, when you can see the same silo in this field for three days and you're walking toward it and your scenery just doesn't change and you just need to keep pushing on and keep going and know that you can make it through and you're doing this not just for yourself but I want to inspire other people and especially empower young women. Brianna says all of the places she's seen in the country, the, out of all the places she's seen in the country, the western part of the United States is her favorite because it's full of wilderness, beauty, and mystery. The Heat strapped up at home to take on the Milwaukee Bucks for the second time this season and fell short, marking the end of the in-season tournament run for Miami. In position to clinch a quarterfinal spot in the tournament with a win and a New York Knicks loss, the Heat kept it close with the Bucks off of a 31-point performance from Bam Adebayo. The back-and-forth contest kept the margin at single digits in the final minute, but Milwaukee held on to clinch Group B in the in-season tournament bracket. The final score was Milwaukee 131, Heat 124. Miami gets ready to face the Indiana Pacers twice in the next four days, starting with the first matchup tomorrow at 7.30 p.m. The Florida Panthers had one of the most successful games of the season against the Ottawa Senators Monday, but the team felt the gut punch Tuesday after falling to the Toronto Maple Leafs. Kevin Stenlund opened up the scoring late in the first period, and Toronto followed with Noah Gregor, tying it up by the second period. The action ramped up, though in a shootout for the win. Florida's Evan Rodriguez appeared to have scored the game winner, but NHL officials overturned the call after he hit the puck twice. Gregor would then net in the shot to win the game for Toronto. Final score, Toronto 2, Panthers 1. Florida faces the Montreal Canadiens tomorrow at 7 p.m. You're watching Newsbreak, and we're coming right back. Severe weather can strike anytime, anywhere, but there's a simple way to stay safe. Hey, Jim Cantori here. I stay safe in dangerous weather by planning ahead. You can stay safe too with a few easy steps. Build an inexpensive kit with supplies for your family's needs. Write down important information like phone numbers and medications. Always talk with your family and remember any pets in your planning. Be ready, be safe. Start your plan today at ready.gov plan. I don't know why you're so sad. You've got a roof over your head. You gotta stop with that depression stuff. That's a white people thing. You all right? It just feels like it's coming from everywhere. Do you want to talk about it? You can talk to me if you're feeling sad. Whenever you need to talk, I'm here, okay? If you're buzzed and doing this, To make yourself feel okay to drive, 
ZWX. You're not okay to drive. Y G K L V W. Uh, regular U. That's all the time we have for News Break. I'm Kenneth Bueno. I'm Kelly Sanchez. Get more news anytime at kaplannews.fiu.edu.